Good morning. I'm going to be demonstrating the wooden dummy form, but we're going to first be practicing this. So it'll be kind of a combined uh, practice and lecture. So the first concept here uh, that I will get to is the center line. Now, I approach the wooden dummy form from Tai Ji Qian, that concept. Uh, so my um, explanations may be different than some of the Wing Chun masters. Uh, so, but here I'm going to sink down. Okay. And you notice this position, you'll see this in a lot of the, you'll see this in the movies, for example, with the Ip Man movies. Uh, so this is designed to protect your groin. But also, if you notice, now this is also from the perspective of Tai Ji Qian. So um, first, you're going to initiate the movement. This is the internal movement from your feet. So your feet rotating here, and then your waist is going to rotate. And then your arm, your whole trunk, your whole body is going to come forward. And so with the punching, you have to feel this connection. Okay, so um, with the whole body. And that's also the concept behind the one inch punch, Bruce Lee. So if you want to check how good your punch is, I extend your fist, and now you're going to turn a little like this, a little to the left, because this is a left punch. So you initiate the turn with your feet and then your waist turning and have somebody push against your fist, somebody who's stronger than you, and see how well you can keep your balance. Now, another thing is to keep your root, okay? And the energy goes qi chen dan tian, which is this area right here. And you're going to push out with your root. Now, that's something that you can't see. Now, the root is your heels, your toes are grabbing the ground and when you turn your waist like this this energy is kind of going upwards and it's going to go through the whole body and if you just turn a little like this your knee and your whole body in your waist right here you'll notice that your punch goes out forward a little so that little distance is where you're going to be concentrating your internal power this is something that you won't learn in a lot of these videos because sometimes some of these secrets are really not taught to outsiders. Okay, so, and I'm of course approaching from the Tai Chi standpoint. So this is the first section. So here, so notice also I use my waist and I find my connection. And then here, and then here, right? Now, when you are practicing with the wooden dummy at home, you don't have to use that much force, but you have to distinguish between each movement. And this is a pull here. And then you're gonna do the bong, bong shou. And then, so you're gonna step here with your left foot and then turn here and hit here. So you wanna have an economy of angles and movements. So when you step here, then you come here. Right? And now you're going to step here, from here, right? And then here, here. Okay, so this swimming hands you should practice. So also, also, bang, bang so. Bang so, bang so, bang so, bang so, bang so. Okay, so once you do the bang so, step out and here. Now, could also attack here. So remember when you learn a form, uh, this is just the first section. Uh, don't limit yourself when you're learning the form. Always be able to think outside of the box. Okay, so now when we go to the second part, it's a mirror image. So it's the same thing over on the opposite side, right? So step here and then here. Now the only difference is here is when you do this here, you're going to go here. Some people just go here, 
and then here, and then it here, here. Okay, you shouldn't rock the body too much. Then one, two, three. Okay, so um, there's one thing that you're probably having difficulty with, which is the stepping. And you go here, here, right? And then when you come here, now you're gonna step over with your right foot, then put your left foot right here and attack here. And it should all be a coordinating movement connected. See, okay, see when I'm here, when I step back, it's connected, connected, all right? And now when I step, I'm gonna step over here, it's connected as well, okay? And then here, so again, from here, you notice I feel my connection here. Now this is one of the reasons why I recommend once you have learned the whole form, you practice blindfolded. and. Because when you're practicing blindfolded, you might be like, oh, where's the connection to the dummy? And you will actually have to step perfectly to connect with the dummy. So a lot of people, um, I posted videos of myself practicing blindfolded with 116 movement form. And I was surprised they didn't attract many views, but it's actually pretty difficult to do it. Okay, so the stepping is, uh, Another thing, so, you know, the step here, step here, step here, right? We're still like in this position, right? Step here, step here, then step here. Okay, so it's a pretty simple, whenever you're going to go on this angle and attack here, you need to step away from your opponent and then you need to step in. So this is going to work with combat training because when you step in, you want to make sure your angle is correct, okay? And that you are attacking a point where the fist is not coming towards you. So that's the purpose behind the form. So now we've done sections one and sections two. So we're going to get to section three now. Okay, so section three, one. Now, notice here, remember what I said, use the the internal power, the twisting power of this whole body. The whole body is connected. It's not just the arm right here. People think, oh, I'm practicing Wing Chun, Yong Chun Chan, and I'm just using the arm. No, it's sync with the body. One, two, three, right here, okay? And then you're going to here, 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 here. Right, and make sure you punch to the center line. And then here, here, here. And then strike. Okay, and then you're gonna turn here, here, a chop, and here. Okay, now you can be a more of a distance, but then make sure you close the gap. And then here, and here. Okay, so, you can always review this and rewind this and watch it over again. So I'm not going to do it a million times, but again, one, two, three, one, two. Very important. Get into a flow. The flow is very important. Okay, so we've already done a lot of different sections here. The next section is this one right here. One, so you can be connected here, connected to the dummy, and then you're gonna pull uh, pie, uh, pull pie, or some people call this a butterfly, a butterfly. Now, uh, one of the things is the butterfly palms are going to be, this is another internal secret. When you come through with the butterfly palms, move your back backwards, sink down, and explosive, explosive force, okay? So, but when you're practicing with the dummy, it's enough just to make it shake like this. So this is a concept that's very alien to the Western mind, which is 
when we think of martial arts, we think um, to develop explosive power, we need to be tense. The tenser you are, the better you are. That's what most people think um, from the Western standpoint. Um, if you have more physical strength, then you're going to win. Uh, again, in my previous videos, I've talked about speed, power, and technique. Now, some people will think, okay, for speed, I have to go really fast and I have to pra practice proper technique, which is true. And then, uh, of course, for power, I have to lift as much weight as possible. So um, if I'm stronger than the other person, then I'm better. But the big problem is that you become too rigid. And, um, you know, many, many, many years ago, um, because I am 53 years old, uh, I used to be a wrestler and we never lifted weights during the season. Because um, when you lift weights during the wrestling season, for example, your body is too tense and your, your muscles are all recovering and it won't, you won't be a good wrestler. Uh, you can't be a good fighter when you have uh, your body, your muscles are too tense. So uh, I, I personally don't lift weights. I just use martial arts as my own form of developing uh, muscles. And um, stationary standing is extremely difficult. And um, some of the traditional ways of practicing are extremely difficult. And so if you practice those uh, traditional ways, uh, you might be carrying a log or a um, stone and you might not even carry it. You might just hold it for um, five minutes. Um, if it is 50 pound stone, for example, you're gonna be extremely strong. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, but let's go back to um, this um, particular um, move. So you're gonna go down here and then up here and then here here and then here okay so again how do we develop internal power from here sink down and relax your body sink down and now when you push out the thing is to relax not to be tense for the explosive power and you don't have to use a lot of force a really good master will not have to use a lot of force to throw the opponent very far. And why is that? Because um, the person is not rigid and the suddenness of the attack and the use of the whole body as a weapon, not the isolated, not just with the hands right here. Oh, I'm pushing like this. This is the internal power. No, this, then your Wing Chun form is useless. Okay, so come down here and then here and power comes through here right through here right and then here 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 right and through here and then from here right and then whole body look so when i step here the whole body goes into this gong so okay so i don't speak cantonese i speak uh mandarin so excuse me for um that so now you can one, two, I can probably not shake my body so much. One, two, you can do small circles. You can go to bigger circles. All right, first start with bigger circles when we practice this move, okay? This is like the cloud hands in Tai Chi. So start with bigger circles and then go to smaller circles. But use your whole body so you're... In, now, in Chen style, this is very similar to Chan Si Jiu because the coiling around here is, and your connection to the dummy is extremely important. And you can develop all different kinds of grappling moves. Here, an explosive power comes from here, but relax the body. Okay, so now a lot of people, when they looked at my forma, because I translate uh, my own martial art to um, the way of the empty fist. And um, a lot of people think of karate, but the reality is um, I, I came up with the idea of xu quan dao. Now xu means weak. Um, so you would normally, it also means empty. So I'm focusing more on uh, xu versus shi. Uh, shi is full in Chinese and xu is empty. Now in Japanese, um, karate is 
Well, this is Chinese. The Chinese translation of the Japanese is Kong Xuan Dao. Kong comes from Buddhism. So Kong means everything is empty, that there's no ultimate form. But a lot of people who have practiced karate, they don't even know that. Um, what is Kong? Because they don't know the Buddhist roots of the martial art. So Kong means that all the forms are just attachments. They're like the clothes that we wear, we get used to wearing them, the way that we look, our appearance, everything that we're born with, it's all something that is ultimately empty, even though we think of it as permanent. So when it's empty, it means that that we can't cling to it. So um, let me go back to this concept of emptiness again. Um, if you ever ask yourself, who are you? You will have trouble if you really philosophically think about who you are. Because who you are right now is not who you are going to be tomorrow. And who you, are, who you were yesterday is not who you are today. And if we analyze it even on a deeper level, you can find so many multiple selves. And the next part is that everything is kind of contingent upon what is happening in the present moment as well. So you could say, I am the present moment, but the present moment itself is changing. So that's how we get to the concept of emptiness. But now human beings, um, because we haven't reached a high level of meditative awareness, um, we, we get attached to the clothes that we have. We get attached to the things that we like. We, uh, so we don't like the things that we don't like, and then it becomes stronger in our lives and our attachments become stronger, especially as we grow older. So I'm like 53 years old. So you imagine all my attachments and all my desires. And uh, But in reality, as we get older, if you start to analyze reality itself and you come up with a philo philo philosophical perspective, you'll realize that in life you need to be fluid, that the changes, and it doesn't matter whether you're coming from a Christian perspective or you're coming from a a Muslim perspective or an atheist perspective or any type of perspective and in life, you do need to uh, flow or roll with the blows in the changes. You can't hold on to everything. That's why when people lose everything, sometimes they gain everything. And um, sometimes the, the people who have nothing, they, they know that human beings, part of the condition is that we really can't hold on to anything. But the people who are holding on to everything, they feel like that they're going to take those things with them when they die. But in reality, we're just when we live and when we die, we're just we, we can't hold on to things. We have to be in the present moment. We have to be free. So getting back to that concept of inner freedom, we have outer freedom. Like I want to be, uh, you know, I want to have or do all of these things and I want my rights respected. And I think that's excellent. Outer freedom is excellent, but there are limitations to the material world. So inner freedom, what is inner freedom? Um, living in the world, but not having all the attachments to it. Like you can have all, you can have different things and have cravings and satisfy them, but realize that ultimately that, that you will never be able to hold on to anything because it's just the human condition. So if we psychologically understand that even ourselves, um, you know, when you lose, for example, a parent, uh, you lose, uh, you feel like you've lost everything. Um, and, but it's also, you get a closer taste of reality, which is that even ourselves, we're going to shed ourselves and lose everything that we have in our lives. And that's suffering. That's dukkha in uh, the Buddhist tradition. But, um, you know, in the Christian tradition or maybe Muslim tradition, you, this is where you develop the faith in a higher power. But um, a lot of the Eastern traditions is not focused on the higher power, but the inner power that you have inside yourself. But it doesn't mean that there has to be a contradiction between the two. Um, and that is something that I've thought about. Uh, but I, I personally think that um, you can find this inner power um, and uh, not necessarily think that that could be connected, for example, to a higher power. And part of the mystery of life is this inner power that you have also with the martial arts. But you have to find this within. It's a unification of the mind and the body and finding peace within yourself. And uh, this goes to a larger discussion about the purpose of martial arts. 
many people feel the purpose of martial arts is aggression, but I, I disagree with that. It should be for self-defense and benefiting others. Okay, and ultimately for health, um, I, I, as a 53-year-old man, that's one of the things that I really think about. Okay, so let's do this one section again. So you're gonna come down through here, power here, power here, and then one, two, three, up here, then here, and then one, one, two, three. And now you realize you're down here, and then come here, and here, and through here, and then. Okay, so I recommend when you're studying Wing Chun, don't just focus on what you're learning from me, because whatever I know is extremely limited. You need to study from many different masters. There are a lot of masters out there on, the, on YouTube. Study all of them, study everything that you can, and, and also try to figure out things for yourself, but focus on the internal power, the inside, um, not just the external power. Don't just move your hand like this. This is not doing Chinese martial arts or even Japanese martial arts or even good, for example, just a uh, boxing form, just using your arm right there when you could use your whole waist and your whole body. You see the difference between that, right? If I just turn a little like this, then this is coming way out, right? Well, what is turning here is this power from here, right? This twisting from here. Right, and if you're really good at Wing Chun, then your stance is gonna be like this. Okay, so even myself, I often don't do that. Why, because that's very traditional. But okay, so see that? Just the turn of the waist and look at the difference of the power there. So, okay, so now we're gonna to go to the next part. So one, two, three, okay, and then, so it's gonna one, two, three, and then four, okay? And one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, one. Okay, so I'm just dividing it into one and two every time. So one, two, three, four, here, okay? And then, so here, right? And then, now you're gonna go here and here, and this is again, okay, right? But just relax and notice how the dummy, when you use this kind of empty force here, it responds and it shakes in an eerie way, okay? And I always love that about the dummy. I feel like there's a saying in uh, Chinese, mu ren zhuang, uh, shi si da. It means it's it's dead. And ren shi huo da. It means that people are alive, but the wooden dummy is dead. But whenever the wooden dummy does that shaking, when I, like that, it is almost creepily like something living, okay? Now, something to, to think about. People say, because it's not acting like a real opponent, it's not realistic. Um, I would say that also the wooden dummy I have outside, I can use full force against it because there's, it's reinforced with concrete at the bottom. So I can use fali, but relax into it and put my whole body into the fali. And unlike this one, which, you know, I have some weights behind it and et cetera, um, it's not going to allow me to do that. But I can use that full force outside with the other wooden dummy that I have. Um, and... Um, in actual combat, um, if you once you break through the defenses, and if you do a good pull pack, you're going to knock the wind out of somebody and push them very far. And if you relax into it and use that empty force, which is called xu jiu, uh, then it's basically going to send your opponent. It's going to be devastating. So you're not going to need multiple techniques after that. Um, you, you're not going to be worrying that much about the opponent's punch anymore because you're going to have neutralized the opponent. And that's one of the goals. Um, if you're practicing self-defense and somebody's about to kill you, you want to neutralize the opponent. That means totally neutralize the opponent with a devastating blow. So if I'm just going like this, that's not good enough. But if I sink into it and use the explosive force, right? Right through here. So here. 
and you know if i'm coming through like that right so it's a lot more power right so a lot more power through uh this but it could be relaxed as well okay so now we're going to go on to the next section i know i meander a lot and digress but i think that a lot of these different things are philosophically important so why so again this is not just the arms moving like this use the twisting power of the waist this is something that tai chi really focuses on one two three one two right one two and then you go here and then just kick here right through here this is a bong bong so and then here right and then one two in chinese you also say hun qing song de only relax yourself. Qing song means relax and kind of free. So um, that's something very important when you practice the form. Okay, so now we get on to the next, the next why. So the um, next, the next particular sequence is a little different. Okay, so we're gonna come up, we're gonna come up from here, and then we're gonna hit here the side kick and come down here and then we're going to come here hit here come down so hit here come down okay so here hit, right here hit. and then you're going to go here and here okay again so you're blocking this angle right here you're blocking the punch and you're hitting the rib cage or the stomach and it's going to be a devastating blow right okay so just remember the coordinated and sudden power when you practice the techniques too sudden power and soft power shuda shujir what so again remember i call my martial art shu quan dao and what does that mean it's the same thing as kong quan dao Xu is um, weak, but here it's also empty. So why is this empty force powerful? Because it is sudden and it's relaxed. So this full relaxation of the body and sudden explosive force and the use of the whole body and the twisting of the waist and twisting of the body to turn the whole body into a weapon is one of the secrets of the Chinese martial arts. So. Okay, so after we, so, so basically we start again, right? So we're gonna be here, one, two, right? One, two, one, two, one, two, and then one. Okay, and now, so we're gonna go on to the next part. This is the last section. There's only eight sections in the form, so, one, two. Okay, so again, don't move your arm like this. Don't just do that. No, use the twining, the twisting power of the waist to, and use the dantian to and relax into it. So, right? But you don't have to hit, hit it too hard though. The form is just soft. Right? One. Okay, so, but in the form, you actually just, okay, so what you're gonna do is you're here. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. Okay, and now you're gonna one, two, three, one, Right? Two. Three. And then this one you're gonna go here and grab. La. So here. Grab. And that's the end of the form. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Um 
as I said, I, according to the frog in the well metaphor, a frog in the well can only see what's around the well, but it can't see the sky above. And in the same way, um, my knowledge of this form is limited because I have only my experiences uh, to understand everything. So this is where the importance of humility in the martial arts comes into play. Um, so while we're learning, we should never allow our egos to get in the way, even if we become a great master. Um, we should keep on learning. And so uh, when I approach this form, I see it as 116 movements, but it's also like one movement. Because if you can think of 116 movements as just one movement and all the other movements are transitions, your movements will become more fluid. So this fluidity, like water, is an important aspect of the martial arts. And I do think that with you know all the different types of kata and forms and everything like that, there's a lot of, uh, you know, and then somebody stops, right? Okay, this is complete fali from the dantian, right? Okay, but what happens after you do that? You have to keep on moving to uh, demonstrate fluidity. So it's not just fali. El fali means emit the force and then suddenly just stop everything, okay? So uh, while you're practicing the Chinese martial arts or any type of martial art, once you emit the power, keep on going, keep flowing, right? Because this flowing like water and being able to adapt to any situation is really important. And that's why some of the forms that I practice, somebody will say, oh, well, what form is that? Well, it's, it's not any form because um, in reality, we also have to practice boxing or kickboxing or fighting or martial arts or karate or uh, whatever you tie boxing or any of the martial arts. The whole idea is to be able to use them in practical fighting conditions and also for your health. And uh, the thing is, is that you want to be able to not just do the form, but work outside of the form. The form is a toolbox with a set of techniques. And then it's up to you to improvise and to use those techniques in actual combat situations or also in your own training to uh, be able to refine those techniques. And that's why you practice them over and over again in the form, but you can always do it a little better. So you're constantly uh, gathering knowledge from different people and synthesizing that knowledge so it makes sense to you. So it fits within into your own philosophy so you can find your own inner master. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture and have a wonderful day.